Hey everyone, it's Maria here. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be working on this makeup look. It's a European inspired makeup look. I grew up in Europe and I remember that my mom was always put together. The uh, bright eye and actually a bright lip was in back then because that was back in the 80s. So I'm going to be doing a more like toned down look of what I think um, a woman in Europe would be wearing to go out for coffee, um, even to go out and do her shopping. I feel like in North America, we're a little bit more toned down with what we wear on a usual basis. And we would leave um, a look like this with a red lip more for a special occasion, dinner or an event. But I think that this look is completely doable. Um, and I think that you should give it a try next time you're out during the daytime. All right. So if you're interested in seeing this beautiful, um, you know, easy to do European beauty aspired look then keep watching okay everyone so let's start with a little bit of skin prep because i feel like you need that kind of uh, lit from within glow so i'm going to start out with a little bit of misting and also a little bit of the grade and face glow so i want to make the skin really dewy and this is an aroli facial mist it smells heavenly and just gives the skin a little bit of hydration you can Pat it in here. All right, so organic Neroli Hydrosol by Cocoon Apothecary. And then just tap it in. And then you're gonna go in and do a little bit of face glow. Now, face glow is the perfect primer for underneath makeup. I love how it has uh, protective qualities to it to protect the skin if you are outside, including um, zinc oxide and um, sustainably sourced mica, um, red raspberry seed oil, so many amazing things in here, but I love how it gives you this glow on the skin and it really helps the foundation go on beautifully. So tap that in. For today, I'm going to use the Puranara Full Coverage Foundation. This is uh, reformulated and it's the Smooth and Conceal Liquid Foundation. I'm going to use the 20N, which is buff. So the colors were redone recently. I used to be the Sunkist Canadian and now I am the 20N. So N stands for neutral. And although this is supposed to be a full coverage foundation, I don't find that it's drying. Um, at all. So I love the texture of these foundations and it always of course depends on how you apply it. I'm going to do a little bit of, an, of a mist again. So this is essential if you want your foundation to be dewy and I'm going to apply it with the brush today. Now um, you know any brush kind of like with the stiffer uh, you know bristle works really well. So you want it to be um, flat you, know, you want it to have a certain width so it can apply easily you don't want to be doing like a hundred strokes to cover up your face so but this kind of helps it apply uh, really nicely and I also love that because my skin is misted it's gonna give it like a lighter kind of dewy uh, consistency so I do apply my foundation everywhere on my face I find that this helps me uh, use less concealer and less of the other stuff to cover up my dark circles. You see that? Like it's instant. So I do take the foundation to all the way to the eye and including the top of the eyelid. And I like to also leave it to sit a little bit like this, like it warms it up. It kind of your natural skin oils help it you know soak through and like absorb much faster there were some videos done on marinated makeup i've done a short um on this and i will try to link it for you below but i think that this blended in beautifully and it cut like all the discoloration all the redness that i have i love doing this uh, as a first pass because now look how little there's left to conceal i, I mean i am going to brighten a tiny bit under here but I just love how this type of trick, you know, I don't do the concealer before the foundation. It just helps me use less product. Now I'm using a little handy palette. Of course, if you don't have a palette, you can use the top of your hand, make sure it's clean and you can take the foundation from there and apply it. Um, I find that a brush does apply it a lot faster and it 
allows me to go into these little corners that sometimes the fingers don't fit. I, I don't think one tool or another applies the foundation better. I think they all have their pros and cons, but I do love how quickly a brush like this applies it and I don't have to like, you know, pull my skin or get my hands dirty for, um, you know, the foundation. I have other things that are coming as well, so it keeps everything nice and neat. So to brighten up the under eye here, I'm gonna use a little bit of the liquid concealer. So this is the very fair shade. I always go up a shade uh, for the concealer, as I've mentioned in some other videos. You need the smallest little amount, and I'm gonna put it right in the deepest points here and I'm also going to do a tiny bit here just to lift the face so because this one is to brighten right it's not to conceal any um, discoloration so and then if you have any redness there and then to brighten the chin a little bit and for this, I'm going to go in with like a stiffer eyeshadow brush. This is a MAC brush. I've had it forever, I think since makeup school, and it's the number 18. So I just want to keep the concealer in the deeper uh, points of the eye here. Now for you, the application might be different, but this is kind of like where I need it the most. So we need this deeper part of the eye here to come forth. Okay, you see the difference here versus the side that wasn't done? And really we're working with such a small amount of product, just whatever is left on that brush. I haven't uh, put any more on there, but if you have really deep discoloration in here, you wanna get the concealer to go there too get the discoloration around your nose or everywhere else you need it. Just push it in. And next we're gonna go in and we're gonna powder and set this in place. So for this one, I'm using the Loose Mineral. Um, this is the Setting Mattifying Powder by Pure Nada. So these are matte minerals. And I really like to take the tiniest amount of this and I'm gonna set the eye area. This is the most important for the eye area to have it not crease. So just the smallest amount, shake off the excess, and then just press it where you did the concealer. So I'm not gonna overpowder. Um, we can go back in and touch it up later if we see any shine coming through. So now that we're done with all this, um, you know, base work, let's get to some color. Okay, so I feel like a brow that's on point is uh, very Euro. Um, so I am gonna use two different products by Plume. I'm gonna use their brow gel and I'm also gonna use their refillable pencil. If you haven't seen this in other videos, these come out and there are cartridges to refill it. The other side is a spoolie. So I'm gonna go in and just um, shape my brows with the pencil first. So this is in Ashi Daybreak. And I also want like a nice uh, strong tail to this brow here. And then with the Ashy Daybreak brow gel, I'm gonna go and kind of like hold it all in place. So it just depends, I guess, how much brow hair you have and how much control you need for your brow hair. And what I wanna do next is I wanna add a bit of warmth to the face, okay? So the brows are in place. You can see how like that just pops right out. So I'm gonna use the uh, matte, yeah, this is the matte bronzer in Alluring by Pura Nada. And I'm gonna use a small brush. This is the same one I used to just um, add some powder to the eyes earlier. I've also had this one forever and it's the MAC 225. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna keep the bronzing controlled, okay? So there's some places around the face that I wanna start adding it to, like my high forehead. 
And the Alluring shade is a really great shade for anyone who doesn't want a shimmery bronzer. I do use the Bronze Clove a lot, but you can see that it's much cooler. This one has more like gold warmth to it. So um, these are the two Puranata bronzers. And for anyone who's looking for a matte bronzer, this one is great. So I'm just going to start kind of applying it around my hairline in small amounts. Like don't use a massive brush. Don't use a huge blush brush because it's going to go um, on areas that you don't want it to go to. So it's kind of like a strategic placement. I'm just going to do it on, you know, higher up here on my cheekbones. And you could do a bit down the bridge of your nose. And if you have a blush brush that is a little bit smaller, I mean, they come in so many different sizes. And you see, they can be much bigger. You can go in and just like blend it in. But it's in a way as well, I'm almost like contouring the forehead here. You can see that it, it has kind of shrunk my forehead by giving it a bit more shadow up here. So after you place it in, you can go in and blend it. But I find that sometimes with a, a bigger blush brush, it doesn't go exactly where you want it. We can add a bit more later. Less is always more. You can add a bit more if you need it. So let's add some color to the eyes. So when I think about growing up in Europe, I remember that, you know, my mom would be always looking spectacular. It doesn't matter where she went. She was going to work or she was taking us shopping. And of course it was the 80s. So she would wear this, um, you know, gorgeous kind of um deeper green eyeshadow, um, sparkly. It looked fabulous on her because she has brown eyes. So I find that the eyes are in place and they are a little bit more dramatic than what we would do here. I find that here we get um, sometimes a bit nervous about a lot of um, stuff on the eyes, but I don't think you need a lot of stuff to make a statement and make a pop. So for the eyes, I'm gonna just go in. I'm gonna use the Everyday Eyeshadow Brush by Pure Nada, and I'm gonna just give my eyes a bit of a contour. So I'm not gonna do really wild colors on the eyes, okay? It's not the 80s. So I am gonna use Clouded though, because this is one of my favorite eyeshadows with this little brush. And I'm just gonna create some shape to the eyes and some warmth, right? Because we want something there. And after that, I am gonna follow up with a liquid eyeliner. I do find that um, liquid eyeliner is not you know, used a lot uh, for every day, but I do think that if you don't try to do a wild wing, that it can be worn by anyone and it gives such a quick pop to the eyes, it puts them in place and you can keep everything else minimalist. Okay, so this is starting to look really great. Just giving the eye a bit of shape here. I'm going to go do the same on the other side. Okay, so it's looking lovely. Just very, very light. But it gives a little bit more of uh, interest to the eye here. Um, there is a lot of lid space here on my eyes. So you know what? Might as well do some contouring and minimizing for this too. Okay. And I love this shade here. This is Mirage. And this is also a beautiful neutral, like a silky, like kind of super light beige. So I do want to brighten the eye here in the middle a little bit, but I still want to keep everything neutral. So just keeping this into the corner of the eye. You can get the inner tear duct to brighten things up. And then when we add the liquid liner, it's really all going to pop. So for the liquid eyeliner, I am going to use the Natural Liquid Eyeliner by Pure Nada in the shade Ink. Now, it comes with a really nice thin brush. But if you don't like the brush that your eyeliner comes in and you prefer something more angled, you can definitely get the color off on your hand or a palette and then go in with your own brush. So in order to do a natural 
eyeliner line and not work with the wing because I find that the wing can be problematic depending on the uh, shape of eye that you have. Um, it might look crooked, it might um, kind of disappear under the fold. So let's do a natural eye line and then see how we like that, all right? So for this type of makeup, I prefer to just look straight ahead. So I'm gonna do that in my mirror and you're gonna just start right on the lash line and you're gonna do it a bit at a time. I feel like this type of eye line is just much more comfortable and anyone can pull it off. If you don't have a lot of lid space, just keep it really tight, little strokes, small line, really close to the lash line and just emphasize the lashes and it doesn't need to be really thick. So it's gonna need a little bit of practice, but. And with a natural eye line, you just stop right where your lashes stop. So you can do a little bit of a pointed end here and just make sure that you really get the roots of the lashes and the line right. A little bit beyond the lashes here. Okay, gonna go do the other side. Okay, here we are. And then for the brow bone, I mean, you can emphasize the brow bone. I kind of have really light skin here, but you could go in with a light um, eyeshadow, like a champagne white or something like that. This is Whisper. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit with my finger and you can just kind of highlight your brow bone if you wanna do that. If you don't have enough space, um, you know, to do it with your finger on there, you can always go in with a really thin brush. Just make sure that if you have deeper set eyes that you're only highlighting the area underneath the brow and not the kind of heavy uh, lid that tends to, you know, take up your eyelid space, so. And then I'm gonna go in with the Growth Mascara by Plume. So this is the Nourish and Amplify Mascara in black. You need to do a really good coat of mascara getting down to the lashes and apply it on the entire eye, um, not just on the edges, to give you that really nice kind of big open eye here. Wiggle back and forth. We do have liner today, but it's a good habit to just build that lash line and to kind of get rid of any gaps between the lashes and the liner. Now I know for this look that some people might be able to do lashes. You don't need them. I find that, you know, when I was growing up in Europe, I didn't see a lot of women dabbling with fake lashes. If you have extensions or you feel comfortable in fake lashes, of course you can add a fake um, lash to this look but I don't really feel like you need it. So this is not, um, you know, a dramatic look for a big night out. This can be, you know, you're going out for coffee um, with a girlfriend, you're having lunch, brunch, um, you know, something like that. And now that we see the intensity of the eye, you could always go back in with your blush brush. And if you want to add a little bit more glow to the cheek, you can go in and build that up. Okay, so this is the angled blush brush by Pure Nada. It's a new blush brush that just kind of launched recently this past month. And I like to keep the blush higher up, curving it into my temple. I will be dropping my hair and I'm touching it up with um, bronzed clove, which is the more shimmery golden bronzer. And I'm putting it higher up on my cheek to add a bit of warmth and a little bit of shimmer and any remaining stuff on the brush. You can go around your face here. All right, so let's get to my favorite part, the lip. Now, depending on your comfort level with this makeup look, you can go for a nude lip. 
but this is not this kind of video. I will show you though how it looks because I am going to be using the Warm Nude Pencil by Piranata and I find that on me that it looks very natural. Um, it matches my lips perfectly. I absolutely love this color, but because we're going to do a brighter lip, I like a base of a nude liner. A nude liner is just so easy to use. I find that it can complement so many of your lipsticks. You don't need to have a red pencil to wear a red lip. But because we are doing a red lip, you need the pencil, okay? So I find that a nude color can complement all your lipsticks, including the red. We're going to be putting the red on the top, so it's not going to show, but it's going to help to keep that red lip in place. It's going to help it not bleed. Make sure you get the edges really well, because that's where we lose the lipstick first. So if you wanted to leave it like this, it's gorgeous, right? So you could go in with a lipstick like Velour. These are the Tin Feather lipsticks and it would complement this liner perfectly. However, I do like a bright red lip and I feel like that is a very kind of iconic European look. So I am going to do a red lip, but if red is not your jam, I also feel like you could go in with Vintage or you could go in with Voltage, the vibrant pink or the classic red, which has a neutral undertone. So the red lip can be applied, of course, directly from the tube. I find that a lip brush of any type, like I got this at an art store. This is a Ben Nye number no. two lip brush and it's teeny tiny. I love it, but it will help kind of like get into any nooks and crannies and just give you more control when applying it. So I find this to be like a cake. For any of you who bake and create birthday cakes, you know how they do that crumb layer of the icing? So do this with a precision um, brush. So. You can go in and touch it up later and do a application from the tube. So if you want a sharp red lip, this is kind of how you have to do it. If you don't want it sharp, you can just apply it from the, um, the tube and then you can go in and just blot it with some tissue and just make sure that the edges are not sharp, but they're like blend in. You can tap, tap it with a finger um, to just blend it into your skin. So pretty hot red lip. So if you want that to stay a few tricks for you, you need to blot it um, with a tissue just lightly and get all that excess off. And then after you've done that, we're going to go back to our setting powder. You're going to tap a tiny amount into the lid and with a fluffy brush, you're going to pick up a tiny bit get rid of the excess and you're just going to lightly powder the area around the red lip. So this helps the red lip like not bleed, helps it stay in place. Okay. And it just helps it last a lot longer. Now, if you wanted a really, um, you know, packed on their red lip, you would go back in with the red tube. Of lipstick you would reapply your lipstick blot once more and then powder once more that really locks it in you have to be sure that your lips are not dry because we are adding powder on top to lock it in place so make sure that your lips are well hydrated and use a moisturizing lipstick before you start this whole process now when you're done the application you can go back to your mist or a setting spray And you can give everything a final misted look. Now for the hair, I mean, 
depends on the kind of hair you have. So mine is, you know, curly and it can be kind of wild when it gets taken down from the bun. So of course you could always, you know, pin it up. Okay, something like this. Or you could leave it down and what about an accessory so i am going to be in europe so i am going to need something to shield me from the sun perhaps this is not so euro but what about a big hat Okay, hey everyone, I hope you loved the tutorial and this is the finished look here. Please give the video a thumbs up and help it rise to the top and subscribe to my channel for more quick makeup tips and skincare tips. So I'll have a video for you here next week. Until then, please let me know if you try this look. Let me know in the comments how you liked it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.